A big thanks to Bernhard for sponsoring this episode. Today we're going to make spare ribs and I invited two of my best friends. One is called Jack and the other is called Coke. Let's get started. Of course I selected beautiful St. Louis style cut ribs. Look at them. They're absolutely gorgeous. Perfectly cut, ready to go. But what I'm looking for in good ribs is color. Look at this, not white meat on the pork, red meat on pork, which means they have had the time to develop. Hemoglobin has been flowing around these muscles. They've been working, they've been building up flavor, and that's how you see it. Of course, we gotta have a little bit of fat on them as well. That beautiful marbling that goes into the meat, that's going to render down and going to deliver us flavor. And I'm combining these beautiful ribs with the flavor of Coke and Jack. Coca-Cola has that bitter sweet flavor that we all love so much. And the Jack, that's gonna bring us extra barbecue flavor because it has that oak barrel flavor built into it and combine these two together with the pork ribs, then you know this is going to be good. Let's start with making a rub, which consists of one part table salt, one part paprika powder, one part onion powder, a quarter part garlic powder, a quarter part cilantro powder, which is optional, and a quarter part cumin powder. Now give it a good shake and your rub is done. And the next step is taking off the membrane that sits on the back of our ribs. Now normally if you have spare ribs, that membrane runs all the way through the ribs. So I like to use a butter knife or like an ordinary dinner knife and just work my way underneath. But when the silver skin sits like this, it's better to start at one edge, peel it off. And when you have a start, you take a piece of paper towel and start tearing it off. There you go. It's as easy as that. And once you got that silver skin off, it's time to put the rub on. You don't need to use adhesive. If you feel the ribs and they have like a little bit of moisture to them, the rub's gonna stick just as they are. Now I'm using a Nutella jar. My kids love Nutella, so what I do is I bring them one of these jars, they eat it for me, empty it for me, put it in the dishwasher, drill in a couple of holes, and then you got your homemade shaker. Look at that, we're trying to spread the rub as equally as we can, so we don't get any big chunks of rub that dry out on your ribs and give you a chunky flavor. We really want the rub to blend in with the ribs. Now let's flip them around, do the other side. And as you can see, these ribs are quite thick, so they can do with a little bit of rub. We want to add as much flavor to them as we can. And when you're selecting ingredients for your rub and you want to have a consistent layer, it's important to use ingredients that are about the same size like we got them here. So you have an equal amount of spread. This is like making ribs down to a science, getting it done right. I got a little bit of wind coming in from the side and I'm using my hand to catch that rub. And this is also a great way to get it to stick to the sides. So we can have some on the sides as well. Now look at my ribs. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. I fired up the Bernard pellet smoker and I put in some apple pellets. This is gonna work perfect with our ribs. I set it to a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius, which is around 240 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it's time to put our beautiful St. Louis style ribs in. There you can see how big our ribs actually are. And this is a big barbecue service, but these ribs, they fill the barbecue right up. Now I'm gonna let this smoke until they pick up a beautiful smoke color. Our ribs have been on for three hours and we're going to take a closer look at them. Look at that beautiful color that's been developed. We got a nice red color. This is the smoke color that we're looking for. We got a dry bark from that rub and still our ribs are juicy. Look at that, all that juice is underneath that crust. And these ribs are ready for a little bit of spray. Some flavor, and it means Jack 
and coke. Of course, you gotta have a proper spray bottle like this. I'm gonna put in some Jack, a little bit of Coca-Cola and some Worcester sauce. And this Worcester sauce is important because it's gonna give us that typical barbecue flavor. Screw the cap on, pump it up. And you're ready to spray. Now we're gonna let these cook for another half hour and then we're gonna wrap them. Of course, you're gonna need some thick aluminum foil and then I'm gonna place in a little bit of butter, some sugar, put the ribs on with the ribs pointed up and then a little bit of Jack and Coke spray. Wrap it up and now they can go back on the grill. The ribs have been in the foil for an hour and I'm betting they're done. But we're going to take a look so we can find out. Look at that. All that good stuff hanging around there. That is promising. Wow, check this out. We got some nice pull on the ribs, not too much. Now the best way to check if the ribs are done is with a toothpick or a probe thermometer and just go in into the ribs and like, if they pull through like butter, then they're done. And honestly, this feels really good, but I think they can do with another half hour. Now, I'm not going to put them back in the foil. I'm going to take them off, but we're going to make a delicious glaze that can go on top of them while they finish cooking. And I'm starting off with the leftovers from my spray bottle. To that, I'm going to add the same amount of ketchup and one eighth part of sherry vinegar and an eighth part of maple syrup. Close it off, give it a good shake and perform the old taste test. Now that tastes good. <laughs> now I'm going to put my ribs back on a Bernard smoker and let them continue to smoke while brushing on the beautiful glaze and checking them for tenderness every 10 minutes or so. And once they're tender, you get to enjoy the best ribs you've ever had. These ribs really look good. Now, I'm, I'm not a big, big fan on patting myself on the back, but this is fantastic. Well, in reality, I, I'm not the master here. The ribs are the master because in reality, if you buy good quality meat, you, you get good quality meat. Look, the juiciness of these ribs is not what I made. Of course, my job is not to screw it up, but if you got good quality, but if you got good quality, but if you got good quality ribs like this, it's really hard to mess up. But they look insane. Look at that. We got beautiful smoke color. We got a nice bark on the outside. We got a nice pull away from that bone. Let's just do a bite test and see what it looks like. Mm. I must say that these look beautiful. And how long has it been? For the last time we have ribs, too long to keep on talking. Wow. Oh my god. These might be like the best ribs I have in a had in a while. Wow. I can't even talk anymore. This is honestly some of the best ribs I had in a while. And combining techniques of putting on a little rub, spraying on some flavors, then glazing on. You're just building layers of flavor onto your ribs, which make them taste so amazing. This is real barbecue. To me, it doesn't get any better than this. For a long time, I was more into uh, Iberico ribs. You know, the more skinnier, with a lot of fat. Beautiful St. Louis style rib like this. You can't say no to it. It has a lot of meat, and all that meat tends to get, get sucked in by, by that smoke. And you know, you see, this is all red. This is all smoke, all smoke ring. Oh man, the whiskey, the bourbon. I wish, I wish I can eat this more. The only weird thing about this is I don't taste the Coke. And I don't know why, but maybe it's me. 
because I, you... I, I totally taste the Coke. You totally taste it. But it's like, um, the first time I ate ribs yeah. with Coca-Cola uh, made in them, I didn't taste it either. But it's like the, like a little hint of bitterness. Yeah. Like it feels like there's something tingling, but there's really not, and yeah. that's the Coca-Cola. Now I know what it is. I'm far too in, inexperienced to actually point it out and like... Yeah, say, it's not like you drink in a glass of Coca-Cola. No. But it's definitely there. The Jack just stands out because of the alcohol flavor. No, actually alcohol doesn't have a flavor, but it's like that barrel aged flavor. And that goes so well with ribs and with barbecue. But there's a lot of sugar in it. So it's a one night stand. So it's a one night stand. Tomorrow it's quinoa is again. It Wait, what? Quinoa? Quinoa. Then I don't know what it is. It's just it's green. Some vegan stuff. stuff. Yeah, with vegan stuff. Or oh, awesome ribs. Close of the video, man. All right, man. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would be so kindly to uh, like and subscribe, put a comment down below as well. Tell us what you think about these ribs. Uh, if you like these ribs, if you ever tried these ribs, or uh, if you just want, want to try it. And show us the pictures, man. Yeah. Show us the pictures. We also need to know, would you date? Would you uh, one night stand? Or would you marry these ribs? Yeah. Big thank you for... Our yeah. patrons? Yeah, big thank you for all the patrons and the YouTube members. Mm -hmm. Hope to see you guys next time. Until then, eat smakelijk. And keep on grilling and marry ribs. Marry ribs? Marry or date ribs.